So Emma finally makes it to the hospital to go see Casey since she couldn't make it with Dan on the first trip round. She gets to the hospital. She asks for her room number, finds her, and then figures out that Casey isn't actually Casey. The woman Lauren was actually talking to wasn't actually the person he thought she was. The person in that hospital bed wasn't Casey Monroe, but in fact, a girl named Winifred Pollard. So who is this mysterious woman and what is she trying to get at? Looking more into it, Wendy is a 35 year old mental patient with a ton of problems, the most prominent one being schizophrenia, of which she was diagnosed with when she was 22. She also dropped out of high school, got married at some point in her life, and had two kids, a boy and a girl. Wendy informed both Emma and Lauren that she was actually blackmailed by Xavier to troll and mess with Lauren, but she actually fell in love with him and decided to stick around a lot longer than she did. I've mentioned him before when we first started talking about Casey, but who is this Xavier guy? Xavier Von Erk is the founder of Perverted Justice, which as we all know, was the group that helped Dateline catch Lauren and ran the show to catch a predator. So, it's also natural for Lauren to go after Xavier and Perverted Justice since he's also going after Chris Hansen and Dateline since they worked together. The reason why Xavier is coming up now is because he's had a much more recent hand in messing and trolling with Lauren. Not only did he tell Casey slash Wendy to go troll Lauren, but he also decided to get a closer look of the man himself. Every year in Maine, there's an event called the 10 Mile Yard Sale where, as the title suggests, there's a very, very long yard sale where people could come and sell and buy things. Lorne is usually selling things because he wants to get rid of all of that disgusting stuff in his trailer. A man came up to Lorne and asked about buying a printer, and Lorne didn't know that the man was reporting him. Oh yeah, today is Saturday. Do you work on Saturdays or what do you do Monday to Friday? All the times I work A month after that yard sale, Lauren figures out that it was actually Xavier who tried to buy that printer off of him. He also figures out that both Paul and Elizabeth were working with Xavier to mess with him. So he decides to cut all of them out. He stops talking to Paul and he stops talking to Elizabeth slash Ramona. But for some reason, he doesn't drop Wendy. He still wants to talk to her and see if something can work out between the two of them. He still thinks that there's something there, so he has to at least give it a shot. I think it's a bit insane, but I think we're past the point of insanity and I have no more words to describe what's going on. I also don't know how to really start this because there are so many phone calls, so I think it's just best we do this the easy way, month by month. Let's get started. So July 15th is when Lauren finds out about Wendy, and they spend the rest of the month basically trying to get to know one another while Lauren stays ultra on guard. Okay. It's in the store. Oh, she just go in. Well, I can have a ton. It's a tundra. Regardless of what you think, it's all interesting stuff. They all have truth about you. And they only use um shell gas. Oh, come on now. I do. Stop telling me things that don't matter. They do matter. I only use shell gas because they don't have additives in their gas. You want me to tell you about me or not? Yeah, I just want to make sure that you're going to be honest with me and telling, you about, telling me about you. Lauren stays so skeptical and guarded that both him and Wendy tend to fight a lot. And this usually leads to a lot of breakups. Breakups that don't happen, but it's funny to look at them because one seems to happen every month. You can't hear what I'm saying if you hang up on me. I don't want to hear what you're saying. You broke up with me. So what? It's for me to text and it's for you to text. I did not break up with you. you I never said me. one word about breaking up with you. You said good luck. I know what that means, and we're done. 
not playing your fucking yes, game. Yeah, you tried to make it seem like you were breaking up with me, and that was what you were trying to do, and that's no. how I took it, and you broke up with me. So, no. leave me alone. A broken eye. A broken eye. A broken eye. Oh, and Lauren decides to stop calling Winifred Wendy because his friend's wife is named Wendy, and it gets pretty confusing. So from now on, everyone's just gonna call her Winnie. Mom is not the phone with Winnie, you no. Know? If we're gonna call her Winnie now, she can't be called Wendy. She don't want to be called Wendy because Tony's Wendy. Lauren is still skeptical of Winnie, but he's warming up to her. He gets to know more about her life and her lifestyle, and through that, we meet a lot of new people like Christy. Some guy asking me where you can score some where you can score some meth at. Yeah, it was Christy's brother. He picked her up. It's time for her to go home. Elise. I'm talking about my friend Elise, and she got dressed at work after her shift, and she's gonna go out to dinner, and she looks the bomb. Okay. Don't be jealous, she still looks nice. Regina. Oh, hey, the, Gina. The probation officer doesn't find out. Your hair looks great, I thought you just had sex. My hair never looks so good afterwards. Malcolm. You didn't say you were there with Emma, you said you were, you were with Regina and, and Malcolm. I know, but I'm just telling you the difference between you and a real responsible person. All characters that are mentioned very little or in passing. We also do get to hear about more important people like Debbie. Oh man, where's Debbie? What, Debbie, Debbie's not home yet? I see her car, but she hasn't come in to say hi. Brian's car's here too! Rhoda. And you told me oh, not to. got a regular party going on. Well, Debbie always has parties. Of course. But they're not sex parties anymore, because Rhoda's here. Jesus Christ. And Victor. You're letting him get that fucking close to you? The fuck We're ever. We're in my room. We're smoking a marijuana. I didn't want to go over there with Victor. But they aren't relevant until later on. As for their relationship, Lauren is starting to slowly realize that Winnie is a piece of work. But it's gonna get a whole lot worse. I keep saying that it's gonna get a whole lot worse because I don't really know how to describe it, but it's, it's gonna get really bad. Shut the fuck up. Go give the phone back to your brother, you fucking piece of shit. I am breaking up with you. This is it. We're through. Of course you are. Because you messed all the guy on the internet. That's why you got me off so fast today. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, are you fucking kidding me about Xavier? Whatever the fuck you're saying, I don't even know because it's so fucking stupid and far from the truth. And you just try to hurt my feelings. I think that you're... Storm. Hurt your feelings, huh? How did I hurt your feelings when I never said anything bad about you? You kept yelling huh. at me are you, all night long. You, are you yelling at me, and then you let your brother call me. Are you looking fire. for a way out? Are you looking for a way out? Well, then break up with me, motherfucker. If you think that I'm working for whatever Xavier, whatever his real name is. On the first day of September, we hit a lot of beats that are going to become familiar as time goes on. 1. Winnie is in rehab for her massive problem with drugs. Despite this, she still does a lot of crack, and has a lot of connections to get crack, like through other people or through her sister's parties. Okay, a beach, a beach party. A beach party, and how many lines of coke are you gonna do there? I can tell when you do coke. No, you can't. Because you go right back to acting like you did when you were in a hospital. Two, when Winnie actually does go to rehab, she's surrounded by a ton of guys. And of course, that makes Lauren very, very jealous. In this particular situation, Winnie did coke the night before at her sister's place and danced shirtless in front of a ton of people. And since Winnie only mentions people like Eric, Sebastian, Victor, Axel, and Jello, it's safe to assume that she danced in front of some guys. I'm asking you to please tell me the truth. I'm not going anywhere. If you tell me the truth, I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to find out from somebody else. I was dancing on the table, okay? And I didn't have a shirt on. 
3. Winnie has a very strange affection towards Dan. She'll bring up Dan constantly in conversation and even call him at random points in time. This happens more and more as the months go by, but for today, Winnie calls Dan to try to pin him down on what he did at the party last night. Uh, 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 uh. Are you fucking Emma? That's none of your business. Are you fucking Sebastian? Not anymore. Or any last. But you didn't tell Lauren about Sebastian, did you? I did. I told him everything. That bullshit. Hey, Dan. Tired of this shit. What? Hey, Dan. What? Did you fuck my sister? That's none of your business. You did, huh? You don't know what you saw. And I don't appreciate you telling Lauren of all this fucking bullshit. Four. Winnie strangely starts to get involved in Lauren's family matters, especially when it comes to his brother Roy. Roy is Lauren's older brother, and just like Lauren, he has a bit of a drinking problem, and now it's up to Lauren to try to help him out a little bit. He makes an anonymous tip to the cops, telling them that his brother is out there driving drunk. This isn't a big deal now, but it'll become very important later. Hey, Aaron. Um, my name is Lauren Armstrong. Um, I want to I want to remain anonymous in this, but my brother is out drinking and driving. Okay. Where would he be? Uh, he was here. And I told him don't pull that van out of this driveway. And I fed him some spaghetti and coffee. He got me in for another plate of spaghetti and more coffee. Then he went back out. I went to bring some water out to him about 45 minutes later, and his van was gone. Um, I'm doing it for his safety and other people's safety, too. Absolutely. I've yeah, been doing this shit. Uh, okay. No, that, that's all right. Okay. I'll give this to the officers. If they have any questions, they'll give you a call, okay? All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. Don't worry, baby. Roy's going to be okay. I think you probably... Just went to go get food and hopefully fell asleep in the parking lot or something. No, I think he's probably going to get more beer is what I think. He knows well, I'm not going to let him drink here. Where does he usually go get beer? Maybe you should take a drive down there and say, look, don't sell this guy beer because the police are looking for him and they'll he, get in trouble. He's got, he's got several places that he gets beer, so it doesn't matter what store I go to. He's got several others and he could just go to another town and stop and get beer in, at any store. There's and a lot of convenience stores. Okay, I'm trying to look at right. As for the rest of the month, it's pretty much the same thing. When he does drugs... Weed, I don't, I don't care about weed. Yeah. Like bullshit coke. Oh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Why? You done? You done with it? No, Gigi's brother sells it, so now I don't have to worry. I have my own delivery guy, so I don't even have to worry. I can just do it at home. Baby, you're fucking up again. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. She does weird sexual stuff with other guys. What was that? When they... What? You tell me why that motherfucker had his hand on your pussy. He just wanted to make sure that he tucked my tampon string in for me. Right, Eric? Oh, no. Fuck you out of me! What? Are you fucking... What a goddamn joke! You don't fucking want me! Fuck you! She's involved with Dan a lot. So are you done... Are you done having phone checks? We're not even on the phone. My sister came home. Yeah, well, you fucking want me for no, we Don't weren't. Don't fucking lie to me. We weren't. Uh... You two, I fucking hung up on you two. You two were on the fucking phone with each other. Uh -huh. I called you both back two times each. So you were phone fucking. So don't fucking tell me you weren't. You want to fucking press your goddamn bullshit with fucking Dan. Look at where you're at now. We were. Now you're fighting to make me believe that you weren't fucking Dan over the phone. 
I wasn't. How do I know you are fucking in off the fucking phone? I wasn't. Maybe you should fucking think of this shit beforehand. I didn't. Stop your stupid fucking bullshit with Dan. I Cause didn't. Because you have been in person with him. I didn't. You have been in person with fucking Dan. How do I know you have a second cock? You fucking great fucking lawyer of fucking big fucking faggot ass dick that you fucking talk about all the time. You want to fucking kill me? You shut your fucking mouth on all fucking dick. Because I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm, I'm If you don't shut the fuck up about, about, about him, you will never hear from me again. Roy. No, I was like, asked him to call me. Hey, he hey, 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 hey. What, baby? Call Aunt Sharon. Call Uncle Clay. Call your mom. And tell them to look through all of their pictures of the yard sale and see if Roy's van is in the picture. You can get the license plate. Same old, same old. You and I are broken up. Why? Because, if you, because you can't stop another guy from touching your fucking pussy when we're together, you will never be able to. Ed, did you stick so your fingers in? That means that you top? don't fucking love me. I just rubbed the top. See? He just rubbed the top. Don't think I didn't hear. He just rubbed the fucking top. You're my fucking girlfriend. No, I broke it up. He has no... He... You have no right to allow his fucking fingers on your pussy! I call Stuart! No, baby, I love you. No, fucking act like you're stupid! I love you. you're not! I'm sorry, baby, I You don't know. fucking love me! If you love me, he never will be near your fucking pussy! You're playing a game with me! Fuck you! Okay, take everything I just said and multiply it by two. When he's still doing drugs. But you continuously call me bitch. I tell you don't do it. You still don't. You still keep doing it. Get off the fucking drugs. Maybe you'll understand what people are saying. A lot of fucking coke. Snorting up an awful lot of fucking coke. We're not going to be together until you're off the fucking drugs. So whatever you need to fucking do to get off them goddamn drugs. If you want to be with me, you fucking better do it. I'm not going to be with a fucking druggie. She's still pretty obsessed with Dan. Oh, you know what a better idea would be? Stand in front of a mirror. Hello? Hey. Hey. Okay, don't look at the camera, but take a screenshot and then text it to Lauren, okay? But don't look, okay? Ready? Um. Okay, I have to put the phone down. I have to put the phone down and walk away from it. So just take the picture after you get my pussy in it. Hold on. Why am I taking a picture of your pussy? When it comes to Roy, the situation has only gotten worse, just not worse for Roy. You see, Lauren likes to get drunk, and when he does get drunk, he doesn't do it alone. He goes to his friend Tony's house, and him, Tony, and Wendy, Tony's wife, all have a good drink together. This is a problem for three reasons. The first being, obviously, that Lauren isn't allowed to drink at all. It's been against his probation to do so since July of last year, so he's breaking his probation. When Lauren does go out to drink, it seems that he's always buying all of the beer, which would be fine, but it seems that Tony doesn't even like his presence, which means that he's kind of just wasting his money on people who don't really care about him. Finally, when Lauren gets drunk, he still has to drive home from Tony's, so he decides to drink and drive. Not only can he harm someone for drinking and driving, but now he's kind of a hypocrite because he called the cops on his brother last month for doing the same exact thing. Okay, to be fair, he isn't a hypocrite for driving while drunk, but he is a hypocrite when other people decide to call the police for doing so and he gets mad at them for it. I'm not, uh, I'm not doing exactly what you want, 
to say any stupid shit that you can to fuck it up. Stupid shit? How about I'm trying to protect people, including you, like you did earlier with Roy. You didn't tell me because you know you don't want to get caught doing the same shit your brother got caught doing, and you've been drinking all fucking day, haven't you? That's right, bitch. Nope. Yes. No, I haven't. Been drinking all day. You know fucking... Do not fucking try to throw shit in my face when you're been fucking coking all it day. up. True or false? Liar. No. Don't what try to fucking. Tell? You've been drinking oh, all no. fucking day. I'm chopping. I'm chopping wood. So don't fucking blame me for chopping wood. You're drunk. It's not illegal. I can chop wood. Do you understand that if you don't start fucking talking to me straight and talking to me the right way, then we are gonna be through. Do you understand that if you hang up on me one more time tonight, we are through? I'm not going to hang up if you fucking understand that you better not fucking talk to me stupid. Do you understand that if you hang up on me tonight one more time, we are through? Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? You want me to answer your question? You better fucking it's answer mine. Yes I ain't no fucking. Question. Not, I'm not because fucking. I'm not joking at all. I don't care how much you're fucking joking. This conversation is not happening in my head at all until you say you understand. Then we'll have a conversation. Well, right now, I'm setting the rule. If you hang up on me one more time, mm-hmm. we're through. What do you want? We're through. Well, you're a fucking choice. You don't want to shut your fucking mouth. You want everything Winnie the way, the way Winnie fucking wants it. Do you understand? Fuck you. We're Fuck threat. you. Do you don't understand? Don't fucking talk to me. We're God damn it. Do you understand? You want everything the way you fuck to fuck you. I don't know how many times I can say the same thing, but yeah. Lauren and Roy fight. Hello. Hi, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Why are you being a date till morning? Oh, I'm not. You want to hang out there? Fuck you! I just lost the Fuck you, man! What? I just... I wanted to see how you were doing, Roy. That's all. Yeah, go to the You don't ask like that. I do! I do! Shut the fuck up, fuck you! I'm gonna call mother. Winnie, fuck you! Winnie starts flirting with Roy to mess with Lauren. You're so Good. smart, Roy. I want to see you in action. Yeah, I can't because Lauren's right there. Yeah. Are you gonna wash your fingers and shove them inside my sweet, tight little pup eye? Yeah, probably. No, can't do that. No, I'm going to do it So let's go. Hurry up. Go. Do it. Go give Lauren a hug and I'll rub your critchety crotch. Winnie also flirts with Dan to mess with Lauren. Can I please know what Dan's balls taste like? What? No. Tell me, uh... I think that um, you sending pictures of your ass to Dan. I had my underwear on and I didn't even do it. It wasn't real. Don't say anything. What? This is not appropriate. Am I? Don't say anything because I'm actually here. She never told me about this yet. Oh, man. I'm sorry. You ruined everything. Sorry. Now she can explain to me why she's sending a picture of her ass to other guys, but she's not sending any to me. It's not other guys, it's just Dan. It's just a picture I sent you before. I took it for you originally. You should feel special. Well, uh, you can't feel special if I don't have it anyway. You got the premiere. And that's really it. On to December. I don't fucking care what the fuck a little girl does to your fucking head, you pedophile. You fucking bitch. Don't fucking talk to me like that again. Fuck you. Who's the bitch now? You, as long as you act like a fucking asshole. Oh, yeah? Why don't you fucking put your little girl's fucking pussy right by your face, you fucking pig, pervert, bitch? What's up, asshole? 
What's up, niece liquor? I know what you did to them, you fucking pig. You probably still jack off to it, don't you? Watching their little asses run around in tiny shorts. You fucking filthy mongrel pig pedophile. Come on, Dozy. Come on. Up. Be careful, Up. Sadie. Up. Uncle Touchy will hurt you. Stop, Uncle Touchy. You can't hold, bitch. We're broken up. Okay, good. Go fuck your dog then. <laughs> yeah, nothing really happens this month either. Here are some highlights though. When your dog got home, their priorities are as fucked up as Winnie. you guys stop sloth looking ugly bitch. Your dogs are cold. Your dogs aren't cold. They're in the house. They're, they're cold. Laying in the bed all the time. They're cold, bitch. They're not cold. They're cold. No, they're not. You just keep They've got the fur coats that on. Fucking asshole. 30 they have fur degrees. coats on. They're not cold. Fucking degrees. Dogs were not oh, meant will you stop? to be degree weather like that, bitch. Jesus fucking Christ. Stop Fuck calling me you. bitch. I'm that shit sounds so fucking ignorant. Dogs. Somebody needs to fucking be a responsible adult for your dogs. It's not you, is it, bitch? No, I don't want to hide in the I don't. I was, I was, I was, my head was fucking messed up last night, man. Between these fucking cars, I can stalk me now. And then there's been your fucking picture on Roy's phone. Oh, but that was it's an accident. Me. Yeah, but it's fucking me up. Yeah. You know. Kyle went by fucking twice, uh, two fucking times last night after I mean, after you and I had gotten off the phone after you had read me about this talking crap yeah, and had gone see. by slow. I don't have anything to do with that. Can't do it with you over there. We're broken at. That's, that's up to you. I'm not going to fucking... I'm not going to fret a lot of you the way, because... Come home drunk and accuse me. I'm telling you fucking doing the same old bullshit. You won't ever do again. So, yeah, you, you, do want, you want me, we'll stay together. If you don't, we'll just go find somebody else new. Whatever you want to do. I'm not playing these fucking make me jealous bullshit games like you played last night and all that shit. You're not going to fucking treat me like that anymore. County Sheriff's Office. If this is an emergency or you need the immediate assistance of a deputy, press 6 now. Oh, of course you gotta do that. Alright, bye Winnie. Uh, bye Winnie, because you can't handle being a fucking normal fucking girlfriend. Bye! So we've gone through about five months of time pretty quickly. Well, quick for the series at least. And we've been kind of spinning our wheels discussing the same few topics over and over again. Other things do happen, like Winnie going in and out of the hospital and rehab a lot, but it happened so many times that it wasn't even worth mentioning. Someone I do want to mention before we head into the new year of 2019 is Debbie Reynolds, a name I said previously but now she starts to become more important so it's best to just talk about her right now. Debbie is Winnie's sister and completely different from her personality-wise. She's a lot more stoic and reserved, often going off and doing her own thing and not really caring about what other people think. She also likes to get to the heart of the issue instead of dance and play around like Winnie would. She's in her 30s, she does advertising as an occupation, and most would say that she looks almost like a Barbie doll. One of the first times Debbie talks to Lauren, Lauren is very combative towards Debbie because her voice sounds really familiar, almost like they've spoken before. He accuses her of working with both Winnie and Xavier in their pursuit to mess with him. Debbie counters this point by saying that she didn't do it. She claims that Winnie is crazy, she does a lot of drugs, has schizophrenia, and she's really good at mimicking other people's voices, especially her own sister. So, when Winnie is blackmailed into trolling Lauren, she of course doesn't use her real voice, but starts off with the voice of Debbie. You was a part of it right from the fucking beginning because of the fact that Emma was there 
am having sex with you. Because it was your having voice. Sex with it was, me. It was I'm not, not a Winnie. lesbian. It was I'm not, not Winnie's a voice. You're obviously it was crazy. not Winnie's voice. It was not do Winnie's I, voice playing Casey Do Morris. I need to get it was yours. a conservatorship over you too? It was not Have Winnie's you voice away? playing. It was not Winnie's voice playing Casey Morrow. It was yours. It was not Winnie's Morrow? voice playing Casey Morrow. It was yours. Okay. <laughs> you know who Casey Morrow is. <laughs> Whatever you say. You, you you try to play some blind and you think <laughs> I don't know. You say. You, your voice is so <laughs> distinct. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable <laughs> we're even having this conversation. Uh, yeah, no shit. When you should be fessing up to the truth. No, I have nothing to fess up with. Nothing. You know, kind of like, kind of like Nick. What about Nick? Oh, so you do know him, huh? No, you go you're just making shit up. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, is this no, about a Nick? Uh, 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 Nick. Oh, now it's a uh, Nick. Well, Nick, <laughs> Nicholas, Nikki, Nick, whatever, whatever you want to call him. What? Don't worry, I'm not as stupid as you seem to think. You obviously are. No, because I've talked to you almost as many times as I've talked to Wendy. No, it's not true. Oh, it's very true. It isn't. Your voice is way too distinct. No. And Wendy, Wendy could not match your voice. She does. No, she doesn't, but that's a nice try. Oh, okay. In that same call, Debbie says that she wants to get conservatorship over Winnie. Basically, Debbie wants to make it so that she's the legal guardian of Winnie since she believes that Winnie can't make her own rational decisions. Well, what did you do? It's not what I did, it's you trying to get conservatorship over her. She needs it. I don't not want from to you. do it. Yeah, she does. She does not. No, she Who does, does she not. Need- who does she need it from then? She doesn't need conservativeship. She needs yes, somebody that loves she her. She does. I love her she with does. all of my heart. She's my sister. I She's love my her. Blood. I no, love you her don't. Too. No, you don't. Don't tell me what I do and what I don't. That's a joke. You don't know me. You don't know how much time me and Winnie have spent together. <sighs> so don't tell me that you know me and you know her. Yeah, what do you love most you about you her? Know, you, the only huh? thing that you love, the only thing that you know is what is in your life. You don't know what she's been doing. Of course I do. She tells me everything. Right. Then you tell me, what has she been doing for the last six months? The last six months, a lot. Like she has what? been through a lot. Yeah, no fucking kidding. I know all about it. Dan, using his magic lawyer skills, was able to convince Debbie not to go through with it, but this still left a very bad taste in Lauren's mouth. All right, Lauren, I apologize for misspeaking, but let me frustrated because I I know. Oh, I know, Dan. I know, Dan. Don't worry. I know. I know. I I know. Don't worry. I sat on the on a video conference call today for two and a half hours with Debbie and her dumb fuck attorney trying to smooth shit out for, for, for Winnie today. And this is the attitude that she's giving me and Emma. After this, Lauren and Debbie's relationship was mostly a negative one. Debbie saw Lauren as a bad influence because Winnie would constantly go run to Debbie and tell her about all the things that Lauren would do to her. Lauren, on the other hand, doesn't like Debbie because he thinks that she is a bad influence. All of the parties that Winnie go to are mostly thrown by her, or at least held at her house, so that's why Lauren really has a big issue with how Debbie conducts herself. The next time they would speak to each other would be one of the times Lauren drove home drunk. She bashed him for doing something obviously wrong. There was no way for me to do that. Will you you and Winnie help me do it tomorrow? Listen to me right now. What you did was absolutely fucked up. You lied more than once because you knew that you were going to I'm sorry car. for lying, you were okay? Drive. Don't apologize. It's my mom, Debbie. He is not to be down there doing that. It's my mom. 
you knows are that. not to be doing, you should not be doing what you're doing. What do you think that would do to her if you did crash into a tree, if you killed someone else? You know better. You know better right now that you are in no condition to drive and you did it anyway. You made up somebody. You tried to make it sound like they were there picking you up. Okay, let's go. This Rick person doesn't even exist. Oh, he doesn't talk. Like we can't see right through that. And then you say you called your brother and you never did. Why are you such a liar? Because I don't care about Roy. I do care it's about, Roy, about Roy. But I care about mom more than anybody. He's at mom's house and he's not supposed to be doing this shit. Okay, but there were other options to have this solved and you completely negated all of them. You didn't even follow a single a single idea. It was all about oh, mom no, getting I'm in my sorry. car. Well, why are you apologizing? Because I know I was wrong. I know I was wrong in doing it. And that's really it for 2018. Debbie is going to come up a lot more often in the upcoming year, but we're still going to stick with Winnie for a little bit longer. Also, my camera angle drastically changed between recordings, so now I'm like really close to the screen. I don't think it looks bad or anything. I'm just warning you because it can be jarring. So now we join everyone back in the new year of 2019. The interest in Roy slowly tapers out near the end of the month, so we won't be hearing much from that anymore. Roy did end up getting arrested, and after he was placed on probation and seemed to be getting the help he needed. I got your text. You said that um, Roy is in jail and he's okay, so don't worry. Thank you for telling me. Well, that's what I understood. Roy's not mad at anybody? No, he talked to mom this morning. Oh, good. His bail's gonna be hundred. His bail's gonna be hundred and sixty dollars. Okay. So he's gonna try to work something out with the judge. I thought about the bail and all, but I'm. Uh, he cost me over two hundred dollars yesterday, so I'm not gonna do it. And mom said, uh, "Mom said she's not gonna do it because she thinks uh, she thinks it's a good idea for him to stay in there." So don't I. If he can't, if he can't get out on his own recognizance. Uh, I think it's a good idea if you stay right in there. That's more thinking. Lauren and Winnie are still together despite breaking up multiple times, determined to make something work. So determined that they even decided to hire a counselor to iron out their issues. Okay, and so right now Lauren is hurting you. Do you think that you need to take a break from Lauren in order to focus on your own good health? Yeah, because dude, I'm gonna be six feet under anyway, so I'm gonna take a permanent break. I'll be as no, you're not. No, you're not taking a that. permanent break. Hold on, you crazy kids. Hold on. No, no, we're Hold not. We're on, not. You're not taking a Lauren. permanent break from me, Lauren. I'm gonna need you to be quiet for a second, Lauren. I, I know. She's hurt Lauren, because I'm in the phone on me you, today, Lauren. I, that means I'm that, sorry about that. So, Winnie, I love you, and you know I love you. I'm, I'm trying to, every time I try to do the right thing, I'm not doing it right. And I'm sorry. Emma and Dan are fine for the most part. Nothing really happens to them. And Debbie was off living her best life. Everything was just jolly for the start of the new year. Yeah, so when he goes to the hospital. If I had to guess, it's probably because of all of the drugs. I believe she's in there because her kidneys are failing, but it could be for a ton of different issues because, you know, she really likes to do crack. So since Winnie is in the hospital, she's gonna need all of the help she can get. That usually comes in the form of Emma or Dan giving her money, but other people start to come in and help her out. Like Victor, one of Winnie's good friends and someone who starts to show up more often. And of course, your typical Winnie shenanigans happen, like trying to undergo a ritual to heal all of her wounds and pain. Say by the power of Grayskull, I heal Winnie with my love. By the power of Grayskull, I heal Winnie with my love. And tell Lauren to repeat one thing for me. Lauren, you gotta repeat one thing, eh? What is that? 
la vida no vale nada. La vida no vale nada. La vida no vale nada. Oh my god. It's working. Your hand's glowing. Why is your hand red? It's working. It's working. Close your eyes. Oh my god. It's working. My job is done. I feel better? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. It worked. Your girlfriend had jaundice like 10 minutes ago. Now she ain't got no yellow in her eyes. Good. That's my girl. Baby, what you doing? Is it that new medicine? I didn't take any of the new medicine today at all. I don't feel pain anymore. But you can't let go of the pigeon. You never lose it. You're gonna die. Really? Yeah, we transferred your soul into the pigeon beak. That's why you got to keep it on you. And it will feel all of your pain for you inside of the beak. But despite that, Winnie is actually in a lot of pain. Or at least that's how she sounds like because she always sounds like she's dying. I'm dying. Uh, I'm dying. As the days go by, Winnie doesn't get much better. In fact, she starts to slip in and out of consciousness. She goes into a coma, and after that, she has a stroke. Now only limited to a stapler click, interpreted by Victor. Hi. I was standing by the stove. I can't hear her. Hey, she said I can't hear her. Man, stop it, Winnie. I'm trying to sleep, man. It's like four o'clock. God. And loud, uncomfortable moans. <sighs> Can you hear me? <laughs> hey, okay, baby, re relax, baby. Relax. Listen, can you hear me? <laughs> baby, can you hear me? Lauren sits back and thinks about what he really wants to do and where he is in life. I mean, at this point, Lauren has been dating Winnie for 7 months, and if you count all of the stuff with Casey, Lauren has known this person for a full year. She's been very difficult from the start and she's a very very destructive person. Plus, no one wants to take care of a stroked out, drug loving girl. Okay, so it's decided then, Lauren is going to stop dating Winnie. But then, who is he going to date? A lonely Lauren is an unhappy one, and he really likes to get back into the dating scene as soon as he can. Well, there's always Emma, but she's kinda always off the table because they're really good friends. Okay, how about Rhoda, Winnie's daughter? No, that would be too weird. She's barely legal, as she just turned 18 on February 28th of this year. Plus, she's starting to see Lauren as more of a father figure, and Lauren was told that she hasn't had the best time with men in her past, so it would be moral to date her. Obviously. So that leads us with our final option, Debbie, who actually isn't a bad option in Lauren's eyes. So why would Lauren dump his year-long girlfriend to get with someone who he hasn't talked to that much and to get with someone who he has hated for the majority of their relationship? Don't actually guess I'm going to tell you. Because they had phone sex the other day. Well, kinda. Debbie was trying to get it on, but Lauren was just standing by the stove doing nothing. When I had phone sex with you the other night, you said that you were standing by the stove and you weren't doing anything at all. And I was so disappointed. I was like, he doesn't want me at all. I, so I'm not gonna lie to you. I was standing by the stove and I was not doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, I, but I was very much listening to you. I, I, I do not like phone sex. I, I love listening to you. I don't like doing it myself. The stroke Winnie just had messed with her head, and Lauren claims that she isn't the same person she once was. I think the stroke did something to her today. 
Well, she's always liked Dan. You know that. Well, yeah, I know, but she still, she's never just completely dismissed me. And, and she she really dismissed me. And it was like, like she's forgotten a lot of things you know, that me and her have shared. A lot of times her and I have shared. Maybe she did forget everything. I don't, I don't think she forgot everything. I don't know, maybe, maybe maybe tomorrow she'll be different I don't I don't know it, it, it was just it was just it was really both me and Dan seemed to think it was really strange way that she acted the only reason Debbie hates Lauren is that she secretly likes him <laughs> like you didn't know you, you knew it and I knew you were attacking me too and that's why we act the way know, that's why we I hate didn't... each other I know but I didn't realize that you were really really attractive yes all of these reasons justify lauren dumping his girlfriend for his sister while she is in the hospital having a stroke okay to be charitable to lauren debbie did flirt with lauren a little bit she even does it in this call but it nowhere near justifies him dumping his girlfriend who's in the hospital for her sister so lauren tells debbie that he's been into her for a while you know, that type of stuff there, it doesn't match up with me. And, and, and I knew it then, but it's still, it, there's, there's so many things about her that are so beautiful. So shitting in the town is a deal breaker. Is that what you mean? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Not way anymore. Yes, I've been attracted for a long time. Wow. And also asks Winnie if he can try something with her sister. Winnie. You you can't love me and Bubba at the same time as Bubba bitch me. Well, I'll always love you, Winnie. You want me or do you want her? Well, I want. I want Debbie. Okay. You can't love me. I want Debbie. You love Debbie, man. I want to try it with Debbie. Yeah, are you okay with that? Um, I, I can make sure I don't waste away here alone before I buy it. No, that's one thing you're not going to be as long. And that seems like the end of the story. Except it isn't, because Winnie was faking her stroke. Hi. I don't know what to believe. I fucking went in there and saw her sick myself. That that's what's fucking me all up. I saw her fucking laying there, Lord. She was attached to fucking machines. How could she call me and say "fuck you, bitch"? It's it was um a test, and I. <laughs> Lauren wanted to see if you were really his friend. Why would you guys do that to me? You know how much money I sent her? Alright. Hey, what's going on, Victor? I don't know, and I, I think you know. You're trying to make a fools in me? How long? Victor, how long has she um, been okay? I don't know, man. She's been fucking talking stupid and clicking the fucking clicker all the whole time, and then today she just starts talking like she can fucking talk. What the fuck? The packages. Look, I don't know, man. Like she was a secret medicine, and she said the hospital couldn't give her in Florida, so I needed to give it to her. I didn't know what it was, and I still don't know what it is. It was a different color sometimes, like a crystal. Lauren, all right, Dan, straight up. Now, are you really going to tell me 
how much money you sent her because I've sent her at least twenty five hundred dollars within the past two weeks. Who are you barking at? Throughout all of this? Within the past month or two, I guess. Oh, I've I've sent. Uh, yeah. Well, the mo- most money I spent was when she was still back in California. If she's even in Florida. I, I, don't, I don't know. But So what I'm telling you is that at, at least $2,500 I've sent, and that's a lot of heroin. So she could be mixing that with whatever pain medications, flipping out, and you can flip out and raise your own blood pressure and all that other bullshit, especially if, you're, if you've been laying in the same position um, just to get sedated. And she might have a heroin addiction. I don't know if you've helped fund it, but I know I fucking probably did. Yes, the entire time when he was faking her stroke. Yes, it sounds very, very crazy, but I'll let Winnie explain herself and her motives. Why did you pretend? No, it's not true. I was really sick, and then when I came out, I pretended for all the doctors to be worried about me, and then Debbie to be worried about me, so she would know and understand that whatever she fucking did to me to try to control me, she's not going to win. I wanted to be with you. I don't like that they were harassing you. I love you. You don't understand. I did this to see if you really loved me, because you can't be honest, even if your life depended on it. And mine did, and you know what? You were finally honest. This morning, you told me that you wanted Debbie. That's all I needed to know. And now I'm fucking done being this stupid lady. You know why? Unhook me from these. You know why? Going home. Because because you were because you were fucking dying. Um, I know. You were dying, Winnie. Finally, give us the fucking truth for once. All right. I love Lauren. I loved him the whole time. I got a bad batch of shit. I got in trouble. They had like ephedrine and those patches and all that other shit cut in with my coke. I had a bad reaction. I went into a coma. My liver got fucked because of all the fentanyl. And now I'm okay. When I woke up and I realized my brain was working, I was all alone. And I started doing my my speech therapy all on my own. Within a week, I was able to get all of my muscle control back. But I pretended that my left side didn't work. So now what? I'm fine. When I came out of the coma, everybody was paying attention to me, so I still pretended to be sick, and I stopped eating so I could get hot and skinny in case my plan wouldn't work to see if you really loved me. I was moved out of California. I'm over here in a place I don't fucking know where I am. I hate my fucking sister, and I needed to know if you loved me. You proved it. I was in the hospital. I was so wet. I was doing drugs the whole time. So what? I was having a little bit of heart palpitations from all of the heroin and everything, all of the coke and everything. Victor did not even know the packages he was delivering me from the dude up the street, what were in them. And now, I know you love my sister. I don't give a fuck. I wanted to see if you wanted to be true to me. I was sick a little bit. I had kidney failure. I came back. I'm fine. I was in a coma because I did too many drugs. And now... That I realized I could get rent-free housing at the hospital. This is pretty messed up, even for Winnie standards. But at least she got what she wanted. What's even better is that no one seems to be really upset about this. Well, except Emma. She's really angry. I don't fucking care about him. This bitch took fucking money out of my family's account, pretty much. Begging me. And now I'm wondering if I helped fund her drug use while in the hospital. It really fucking burns my chonies. I'm so mad at your fucking girlfriend, Lauren. I'm shaking. I want to fucking strangle her. I want my fucking money. Alright, I'm going to do a little bit of a recap because I can see how this can be kind of confusing. So Winnie went to the hospital in the middle of January because her kidney or liver was damaged. About a month passes and Winnie has a stroke and falls into a coma. She has many strokes and seizures during this time, but never a coma until now. She wakes up from her coma in late February and she basically recovers in like a week. She does her speech therapy and she ends up fine for the most part. When she woke up from her coma though, she realized the benefits of being sick. 
She gets free rent at the hospital. Emma and Dan are giving her money. She can use that money to buy drugs from their local drug dealer. She can then use Victor to sneak the drugs into the hospital, making him believe that it's some alternative medicine. And most importantly, she's getting a lot of attention. So she starts to fake her stroke and reap the benefits. More days pass and Lauren starts flirting with Debbie. So Winnie kind of just goes with everything. And it worked out for her because now it's shown that Lauren is very unfaithful. So after she's gotten everything she wanted, she tells everyone that she was faking it. Of course, everyone is upset, Emma being the most upset, and Winnie bounces from the hospital in fear of Emma coming and beating her to death. Winnie basically ditches the hospital to go on the run from Emma, and she decides to bring along Dan, Victor, and Rhoda. Rhoda, or Rhoder Walker, which is her real name, is an 18-year-old girl and is the daughter of Winnie. She is a very impressionable person, often copying the behaviors and actions of the people around her, which is why she acts so much like her mother by doing drugs and other things. At the age of 17, she had a child with a man named Gigi, someone who sexually assaulted her and is a local drug dealer in her area. As you can tell, Rhoda hasn't had the best upbringing, and ever since Lauren met Winnie, Rhoda has been under the custody of Debbie. Can we go get nuggets? Not nuggets. <laughs> okay, from where? I want a Happy Meal. You're too old for a Happy Meal. You want the toy. <sighs> Alright. God. I don't like getting chicken nuggets. It makes me remember something. What? Well, Can you don't think of that. Like sweet and sour sauce? My pussy smells like sweet and sour sauce all the time. <laughs> okay, bye, Lauren. Winnie is still running around in the world, and because of that, she isn't at the hospital. Because she isn't at the hospital, her health is still rapidly declining. This would be on her mind, and something she should deal with immediately, because it's her health. But her daughter, Rhoda, is becoming more and more of a nuisance, and taking up more of Winnie's time. For example, Rhoda and Gigi were kicked out of the hospital for stealing other people's medication and Winnie had to go pick them up and deal with their crying the whole time. Oh shit, you at the hospital now? I'm pulling away, the hospital kicked them out. Kicked who out? Rhoda and Gigi. Hi. I don't know, I don't believe them. I think you're lying, eh? And I think that you got kicked out because of what that old lady said that you guys were trying to get medicine for pain from other patients fucking assholes I know you can hear me you fucking assholes yeah wow these fucking little cunts I damn it Hey, well, you made him cry. Or how about Rhoda and Gigi driving into a pole while Winnie was in the car, which resulted in Rhoda going to jail and Winnie being interrogated by the cops. The way Rhoda has been acting has pushed Winnie to be more of a mother figure to both Rhoda and LJ. LJ is the name of Rhoda's baby, by the way. Winnie might even be good enough to date again if she stays on this path. Alas, some things are too good to be true, and Winnie decides to go on a two-day drug binge. Her reasoning for doing this? Well, she's now aware of her current health, and she thinks she's going to die within the next month, so it's best to just start partying now. Winnie, you need to, you need to lay down and go to sleep. Yeah, go lay down, or go swoon a, in the tub. You've been on a two-day binge. You've been on a two-day two day binge, and you're like Roy used to be. You would, too, if you knew you were gonna die in a month, yeah. Well, if you're gonna die, why the hell do you want to rush it? He's you're, supposed to, you're supposed to enjoy it, not not make it worse. No. No, enjoy you... time with your daughter, don't make it worse. Lauren and Rhoda help Winnie shower and get to bed, and then after, they take her to the hospital so she can be properly treated. Because the world revolves around Lauren, 
he has to now take another step back and figure out what he wants to do and who he wants to be with. After the whole fake stroke thing, Lauren has been keeping Winnie as a back pocket option just in case she actually changes, but after the way she has been treating both LJ and Rhoda, there's not really a chance that they're going to get back together. The last time Lauren thought about this, he was very gung-ho about dating Debbie, but Debbie only seems to only care about herself. Plus, she's been gone on a trip for a week and a half, so they haven't been talking much. So obviously, there's only one option left. Rhoda. Obviously. So Lauren and Rhoda start talking, some via phone and some via texting. Some of it casual, but most of it was sexual. I do love you, honey. Yay! Then I'm yours, Daddy. I'm your little girl. We're gonna have a lot of fun together. Yeah, we will. Yes, we will, baby. I wanna grab your biscuit. <laughs> you want? <laughs> you want to grab my biscuit? <laughs> yeah. I, that's your butt. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. I think it probably was. <laughs> Oh, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do after you grab my biscuit? I'm going to wait till you turn around and say, did you grab my biscuit? And I'm going to say, yes, I did, Daddy. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say, well, maybe you ought to grab my hot dog, too. Oh, wow. Will you be naked? <laughs> I can. So <laughs> will I laugh? Will you be naked? I will. Good. Then I'll grab it with my mouth uh, like this. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. I don't think I need to tell you how wrong this is. A guy who was exposed for trying to have sex with a 12 year old is now trying to get with someone who not only just turned 18 a few weeks ago, but someone who can't really make their own rational decisions and someone who has been emulating their mother's terrible behavior. And the cherry on top is that Lorne knows that there's something wrong with this, but he still kind of goes through with it. Wait, now, I spoke to her for a little bit and it kind of got a little weird, so I said, I don't want to continue this conversation, and I hung up with her, but she said something to me that you guys have been talking? In, in Florida, yeah. Okay, what's going on? I don't know. Try to be, try to be more of a dad figure to her, and she just, and, and she's pretty funny. <laughs> You're cutting out a little bit, buddy. <laughs> I said she's pretty hot. Who's hot? Rhoda. I don't know what she looks like. I, wait a minute. Aren't you dating Winnie? No, I'm not dating Winnie. Winnie, Winnie thought I was. Uh, and I and I was thinking about it. I was thinking about dating her again, but she she got into drugs again, and and she well she hit when she hit Rhoda, and that was that was the final straw for me. All right, I didn't I didn't know all that. She's, she's on drugs. You know how she is when she's on drugs. She's just stupid. Oh, it's because it sounded yeah. like you were interested in her. I was. I was interested in Debbie. The problem with Debbie is Debbie thinks about Debbie and she's not thinking about anyone else. So there's no room for you and her life or something? In Debbie's life? In the, no, evidently, no, I don't know. I, I don't know. In, I, I, do, I don't know. I know Winnie, I know me and Winnie are done. Whether she knows it or not. I mean, she's supposed to know because I've told her several times. But she has these moments where it's in her head that I'm still hers. And I get to tell her all over again, no, I'm not. And my now is Rhoda. I actually got to spend some decent time with Rhoda last couple of days and just bothers me that she's 18. What age would you like her to be? Well, if she was Debbie or Winnie's age, it would be a lot better. 
Yeah. But I mean, she does act mature. Now, between the, the three of them, who do you think you want the most? Um, I don't know. It's toss up between Debbie and Rhoda. I don't want Winnie anymore. I'm tired really? of her shit. You guys yeah. were, were so good together, though. Uh, well, we were until, until she fucking did her drugs again and did the shit the other night that she did a rota that, that just turned me right off. Definitely sucks. All right, hey, I'm, I'm going to go to bed, Dan. Yeah, I'm not going to keep it too long. and uh, So I just uh, wanted to know what was going on, you know? Yeah, right now I'm tossing my mind back and forth and I'll roll up. The right. difficult part is that she's 18. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Once Lauren said and did things that he can't take back now, he realizes that this was a really bad idea. Not because of what I mentioned earlier, but because Lauren is starting to see that Rhoda is acting more like her mother, and Lauren wants less and less to do with that. A good example of this is Rhoda sexually assaulting Dan and getting kicked out of Emma's place for doing so. I know you're fucking sorry, little cunt. I didn't mean to try to grab Dan's balls with my mouth. I walked in and I saw everything. Sorry. So Lauren snaps out of it and tries to be that father figure again, trying to get Rhoda to stop acting like her mom and to stop being so sexual. I'm sorry, Daddy. Rhoda, I told you don't act like your mother. I'm sorry, Daddy. Did you say sorry to Emma and actually mean it? Yeah, she, she smacked me and told me to go fuck oh. myself. Well, good, you deserved it. Daddy! Don't act like your mother. Emma has done nothing but be good to your mother. And no. your mother's just gonna cunt to her. Ah! Uh, don't call my mama. Pisses me off. Cunt. Daddy, I'm on the way. Wee! Okay. Behave, honey. I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't mean to be a bitch. I know. You, you, you can't listen to your mom. You, you act the way that you act. Let your mom act the way that she act. Hi, right, Daddy. Oh, and while all this was happening, Winnie was still at the hospital and her blood pressure normalized, which is good. After Rhoda gets kicked out of Emma's, Dan decides to take her to Winnie's to go stay up there with her because she isn't doing so well. Even though her blood pressure normalized, Winnie still claims that she is in a lot of pain, and she refuses to go on dialysis for her kidneys, which is pretty bad. Once Rhoda and Dan arrive at the hospital, Winnie actually says that she's tired of fighting and wants to kill herself. Pretty dark, I know, but it's gonna get funny soon, trust me. The way Winnie is gonna go about killing herself is through suicide pill. Quick and easy. While Winnie was in the bathroom and Lauren was trying to talk her out of killing herself, Rhoda asked Lauren if she could eat a pot brownie left out on the table. Can I have some of my mom's weed brownie? Yeah, you can, baby. Thank you. Lauren gives the go-ahead for Rhoda to eat the brownie, and well... Oh my god. <laughs> Rhoda, you didn't take a bite of this, did you? Yeah. It had my fucking right to death with a dignity pill in it. Oh my god. Throw it what off. The You're fuck? gonna fucking die. Oh my god. Throw it yeah. off. Make oh my a god, doctor. Make a puke it. Lauren said I could. Lauren said yeah, I could. She said it was a she said it was a pot brownie. Oh my god. Doctor! Jeez. Doctor! Her my doctor, fucking oh my word. God. Make her throw up. Oh my god! Lauren! She told me it was a she told me it was a pot brownie. You told her to eat it! She asked me if she could take a bite out of it. She told me it was it was a pot brownie. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, that's right. Winnie put the suicide pill inside the pot brownie and Rhoda ate the brownie. 
she was immediately rushed into a room so she can be treated, and everybody else just lights up. Oh my how god! Could, how did she not know what the fuck that thing was? Why she asked and tell me it was a pop brownie? You should have told her no! She's only 18! She don't need to be doing porn! That's something you should have thought of before! Bitch! I didn't kill her! Stop it! I hate you! I hate you! Stop it! Listen! They've got it, they're gonna pump her stomach! I can't stand you! You killed my daughter! Stop it, Winnie! I'm not fucking there, I don't know what the fuck is there! She should know what's there and what that thing is. She's been there all day. Oh, why did you throw her to eat it? Why did you do it? Why the fuck is the goddamn thing there? Oh my god! <laughs> why did it? That thing should not be around with anybody in the room. I was gonna eat it. I was going to the bathroom to prepare it. You told me to make the decision and I went to do my hair so I could come to the bed and eat it and die. Oh well, and, and, and then you tell me you're gonna fight. Well, yeah, I lied, okay? What, Dad? What do you want? Oh my God, they said that someone just went into a cardiac arrest down in the emergency room. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, you bastard. What the fuck? I don't I don't know if it's her, but we all we can do is hope and pray that it's not. Dad, I need you to find out if it's her. Alright, all right. I'm gonna go and find out. Okay. Just relax, okay? Oh my god. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's one fucking thing after another. Well, it was supposed to be death with dignity, okay? Not murder by pedophile. It. Well, you shouldn't have left the brown Winnie. fucking nightstand. So what? Stop saying stupid shit, Winnie. Fuck you, I love you, you bastard. You killed my daughter almost. Both of you shut the fuck up. Both of you. Okay. You shouldn't have had the brownie on the fucking bedside stand and Lauren had no fucking business telling her to eat a brownie that had fucking weed in it or whatever. Both of you take the fucking blame. I'm sorry, Dad. Both I'm sorry, Lauren. This is half my fault. You're right. I'm sorry, okay? But both of you. It was an accident. It was an accident. And it's an accident. But both of you. <laughs> God damn it. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cry. I'm really, really confused. Oh, God. Let's start thinking about Rhoda and not our own spoiled fucking asses right now. When he also decides to use this time to bash Lauren for trying to get with her daughter, so that's pretty fun. Nice voicemail. Yeah. I don't remember what my voicemail was. No, nice voicemail you left. On Rhoda's voicemail. Whatever you want, Rhoda's voicemail. You need to tell me what you did wrong so I can be sure that you're not going to fuck around with my daughter. Or I'm going to tell Dan and Emma. Tell me right now. What, what I did wrong. What I did wrong about what, Winnie? What are you not going to do ever a fucking again? What did I do? To begin with. You told my daughter. That you were gonna fuck her sweet little pussy. No, you were gonna, I was gonna fuck her sweet little pussy. And you were gonna fuck it hard until it hurt. If you don't believe me, then I can just find right. the call and play it back for you. I was gonna erase them, but now maybe oh, Dan no, and Emma should that. go. That way they should try it's to get it. Fine, because I don't remember. Fine, I don't remember saying that. You don't remember saying it? Will you remember when Maria asks you about it? You're not gonna have my daughter move up there with you. Do you fucking understand? You mean don't get on here. Don't call me and try to fucking bitch me out all the time. I'm not going to all you. All the time? Lauren, I don't have much time left. Uh, I'm confronting yeah. you about something that you should have known better about. Well, you weren't supposed well, to I be don't... a boyfriend. You better ease up on that fucking bullshit when she comes out. Do you understand me? Well, hey, get off it. 
you have no standing or grounds to act like you are the superior one here because you're not, okay? I have enough information to fucking bury you. So just cut it out and be cool with me, you little bitch. Don't call me bitch. What else? You're fucking threatening me. You. I love you. I love you because I love you. Oh, yeah? You love Rhoda because you You don't need to be acting like a bitch to me. I'm fucking tired of this shit. You've been doing it for a long time. Why don't you just admit what you've been doing and stop deflecting? All right, it's time to do another recap, just to make sure everyone is on the same page. So Winnie flees the hospital in fear of Emma in the beginning of March. Mind you, she still is sick and needs medical attention, but she doesn't care and she's just gonna leave. As she leaves, she by proxy drags along Victor, who is just a loyal friend who will stay by Winnie's side, Dan, who follows Winnie to make sure that she doesn't die, and both Rhoda and her baby because she's her mom. So Winnie has this group with her. For the most part, everything is fine. The only problem is Rhoda is acting crazy and she keeps getting herself in trouble, which forces Winnie to kind of step up and act more like an adult. So while all of this is happening, we go back to Lorne and he's just thinking about who to date and who he wants to be with, which is insane. I don't know why he's thinking about this while crazy stuff is happening like every day, but he thinks about it and decides, hey, let's give Rhoda a shot. So he starts talking to her sexually, which is a really bad idea for a ton of reasons, and Lauren figures that out and stops doing it. We cut back to Winnie, who just went off the rails and did a bunch of drugs, and eventually, Lauren and Rhoda brought her back to the hospital. A few days pass, and both Dan and Rhoda decide to go check up on Winnie to see how she's doing. It turns out that she's trying to kill herself via suicide pill. Lauren attempts to talk her out of it, and also gives Rhoda the go-ahead to eat a pot brownie that's just laying on a counter somewhere. Turns out that the brownie had the suicide pill in it, and she ate it. Everyone freaks out, Rhoda is placed in the ER, and sadly, Rhoda didn't make it. She was stable for a while, but she died a few days after she ate the brownie. And as we all know, when there's a death, there's a funeral. Hello, What's the matter, baby? Rhoda's dead! What? Rhoda died! Died? Yes! Fucking word. Oh my god! Is your dad? <laughs> Would you like to say a few words? Oh, Lord. You're on speaker, baby. Lord? Why, why, am on, why am I on speaker? The, the minister just announced that you would like to say a few words. No, let, let him continue with the service. <laughs> okay. Alright, well. Uh, the, the mother would like to say something. Okay. I'm, my name is Winnie, it's me! It's Winnie. Um, my daughter Rhoda was special, and not like retarded or anything. He's like really nice. He was beautiful, and she loved animals. She has the best boobs ever. <laughs> Shut up! 
Our favorite thing to do is take a bubble bath. Um, her last prank was she chewed up a Tootsie Roll and put it on the toilet seat to make the doctor think she was Shane. And then she survived by me! And then her dad, Lorne Armstrong, who refused to say a few words while I was trying to collect myself. <laughs> Okay, I'm dead. Uh. Okay. My name is Victor Vergüenza Guadalupe Alvarez. Oh. In oh. Rona was a good friend of mine. She was, she was really funny. She was making jokes. And she was a good singer. She got that from her mama. No, I think she got it from her dad. Oh. Um, uh, she was a mother, but then she gave her kid away because she was a good person and she knew that she couldn't do what she had to do for him. And it was a big self-sacrificiality for her. Um, she liked it, the chicken wing song. <laughs> And if you was hungry, she'd let you have half of her sandwich, and she wouldn't take the meat out like her mom. <laughs> oh yeah, and um, she always left a big tip at the restaurant because she was nice, and she she could drink a whole bottle of water in ten seconds. Oh yeah, that was cool. <laughs> okay, um. I knew Winnie for a short time, and in that short time, I met her daughter, Rhoda. She was really um, a delightful young lady, physically beautiful, and she had a spirit that shone through. She was so generous with her love. She would give you a hug seconds after meeting you and um it was really um open and she was one of the most honest people I know knew um she was loved by her father and mother and good friend Victor and her aunt Debbie that's all Alright, oh good. Jacksonville recognizes Dan O'Connor. <laughs> As many of you know, I've only known Rhoda for a short time. And as many of you also know, I am an ordained minister. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I'm available, uh, you could find me at danoconnor.com if um, you need my services. Winnie, stop farting. Lauren, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you want to say uh, a few quick words, now is the time. There's only the four of us here, and the dad and him on the phone. I love you, Rona. I'm going to play. I'm sorry this happened. Oh, go ahead, baby. I'm so sorry this happened. Rhoda, I'm sorry for the brownie, baby. It's okay. That's all I can say. I can't even talk. Okay. It's okay, Lauren. You you, you did good. It's you, all right, Lauren. <laughs> I, I can't talk no either. You spoke, and that's the important thing. Shut up, Victor. Okay, take her away now. I can't stand to look at her dead. I think it would be fitting if we all sang one for, for Rona. 
Okay. Chicken wing. Chicken wing. wing. I dog and bologna. Chicken macaroni. Chili with my homies. Chicken wing. Chicken wing. I dog and bologna. Chicken macaroni. Chili with my homies. <laughs> <laughs> Lord's not singing it. I, I, got I, can't, I can't remember it, baby. <laughs> chicken I mean, wing, I remember, chicken but I wing, don't... hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni, chilling with my homies, chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna. <laughs> chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna. <laughs> I love you. Wing, chicken, chicken wing, chicken wing. I don't get My Rona, you beautiful princess. Sleep well, brother. <laughs>
Sounds like the perfect job for Debbie. Lauren and Debbie started to spend a good amount of time talking on the phone to each other about a lot of different things, all with the goal of curbing Lauren's destructive behavior. I knew what I was doing with Rhoda was wrong. I didn't want to go there with Rhoda. And she was going to go to Gigi. That's why I caved into Rhoda. There's not one part of that that I'm lying to you about. I'm not going to lie to you about that and tell you anything different. Even even if you try to get me to, to go a different way with it, I'm not going to tell you anything different. Because that's what happened. That's what led me to go to Rhoda to fucking get her, to keep her away from Gigi. And yes, I was attracted to Rhoda. And all the other stuff that I told you is fucking true. But that's what led me to keep Rhoda away from Gigi. That's what started the whole thing. If you weren't attracted to her, though, you wouldn't have moved forward. I know. I'm not going to deny it. I was attracted to her. Right. So that's why you got involved in the sexual stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But another part of it was, because if I didn't, she would have gone to Gigi. But if Rhoda was not attractive, and Gigi was still there, all of the elements of her life were still present, but she was not attractive, it never would have happened. You would have had to go about it a different way to get her away from Gigi. The things they would discuss include his probation, his drinking, his past, and the sting and show he was on. To further expand on this, they would talk about probation and topics that lie under it such as lie detector tests and the fact that he hasn't passed his class in like years. Failing that test really upset me again quite a bit because I was so open with him. Well, tell me uh, about the I questions and that was something that I meant to ask you. Tell me about the questions. Did you write them down? I, I, there's only two questions that I can remember and those were two of the three that the more I failed because he, he said he did it different with me this time. The, it was the first time that he has tried this on anybody and he, he like put him in a group the questions in a group okay and uh, I don't know exactly the way he did it but he said it was different the way he was doing it but okay. one was have you drank in the last two weeks and the other was have you told the truth about the amount you drank those are the two that I, that I remember I can't remember what the third one was but automatic fail what do you mean automatic fail I, I could have told you that you would have failed those questions. About the because that you're I drank. absolutely. Yeah, but I, I, I opened up to him about it, and I. He asked me if I minimized it with, with Dwayne and Marie, and I said yes. Okay, but when he asked you, do you lie about what was the question? Do you lie about or do you minimize the amount that you drink? Have and you, what did you say? I didn't, uh, it was, have you told the truth about the amount that you drank? Okay, and what did you say? I said yes. That's a lie. Because I have no, because I told him before. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. I told him. Just because you confess right before the test, when he asks you the question, have you lied? And you say, no, I haven't lied. I'm then you I just said, lied. Yes, because I lied. Because I because I, I lied to him. I didn't even think about that. When it comes to drinking, Debbie primarily focuses on Lauren's relationship with Tony and Wendy because he still goes over there to get drunk, and he still drives home drunk. Why I go over Tony and Wendy's? How I don't want to go over Tony and Wendy's, but I wind up going over there. How I can't stand Wendy. I really can't stand Tony either. Okay, well, why don't why don't we kind of start there? Why did you go there yesterday? I got just bored. Okay, I so why I got bored because I had plenty to do. I don't know. I don't, Marie asked me why I went there. I told her I don't know. So I was just bored, and I just felt like going over there. You know, I you know I can't stand. It don't make sense to me because as much as she's fucked me over and, and Wendy, she just grossed me out. Okay, so 
seeing as that promised you that I Well, I mean, seeing as as you're talking about how you don't like them, it's kind of well, it's, strange that you would go there. Well, so what see, what is know. better? Hang on a second. What is better? What, like, what are you getting out of it then? That makes it I'm, better to go there than to not go there. I like Tony, and, I'd, and Tony's really the only one that I like to drink with because he doesn't get stupid and. and You know, and we just sit there and relax and have a few beers. So let me so ask nice. you, let me ask you, what what is it that goes on in your head that makes it okay for you to get in your car after you've been drinking? Ignorance. That's not good enough. It's not okay to get in my car after I've been drinking. I know that. That's okay, why I don't so know why I go over Tony's drink because I, this is another thing. When he doesn't fucking drink anything. But then, I don't know why it's fucking stupid. I have so much to fucking lose and to do something so stupid as, as go over there and then drive after I've been drinking. I've got so much to fucking lose. A large bulk of the chat were about his past and the sting, since that seems to be where a lot of the problems lie. His constant denial wasn't helping him get anywhere, so his problems had to be talked about in length for several hours. When I was, even when I was sitting there talking on the computer, I never wanted, I, in my head, I knew I didn't want to go to the to the sing house. Okay, what does that mean? Why not? Just because I didn't, it was just something to do, just sit there and talk to someone. And she made me feel like she cared. Okay, but wait a minute. After, after being so used by my family and feeling like nobody cared. Okay, but wait a minute. And that's what kept me talking. Okay, but wait a minute. What do you mean you didn't want to go there? Why not? I mean, I did not want to go to the sting house. But why I not? I sit there and talk all, all, all day, but I didn't know why. Because, because I knew in my head that it was wrong. Okay, why was it wrong? Then, because, well, because she was underage. She was 13. Mm -hmm. And it was wrong for me to do that. Right. It was wrong for me to do everything that I did on there. But in my head, I was telling myself, I'm not really going to go there. So I'm just talking to her. And then it got out of hand, doing what I was thinking. And I wound up doing it. Okay. Can I ask you something? And yeah. we had touched upon it um, the last time that we talked. The first time that you were talking to her the very first day, when uh, she said she was 13 and you were talking about how you're a good guy, don't talk to any other guys. And then it turned very quickly and you said something like, did you ever hear anything in this room that made you say, wow? And what you were talking about was like, I, I'm assuming that they were, you know, could say something sexual in the in the regular chat room yes. that you guys were hanging out in. Okay, so yeah. that was your that was your first line. Yeah. Because that's what you were gunning for. Yeah. So when you're talking about you were feeling low because of experiences that you had with your family, and your life was spinning out of control. There was a lot of stuff against you. You had that whole situation with um, Betty's house that happened and you had to you had to bail out of there. So you went to Nashville and then um, you know you were getting on the computer. And so before it started turning into something about being in love with each other, it turned sexual before then. So I want to know Why did that happen? Knowing that she was 13, what turned you on about that? I don't know. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I want you to think about it then. So I'm curious why they were brought up. Because at the time, I really did not intend to do what I, what I wound up doing. I really intended to just give her somebody to talk to. Well, That's okay, the well, go, of the conversation. right. It was only, 
it was only a couple of minutes in the conversation and you brought them up. Yeah, and this is part of what messed me up is that this is why I don't, this is why it's hard for me to, to get past what I did. It was only not long after that I started, I started talking sexually to her. And it, it bothers me. It bothers me because I can't figure it out. Well, we already figured it out. Well, I know, but I, can, I can't figure out why I did what I did. You can't when they, when verbalize When I got so pissed it. off about somebody else doing it to Leanne. You can't and when verbalize it. when I started it. out. But when I started out, it's not what I wanted to do. I can't figure out why I did it. Well, I, I know why I can, I, I figure out why I did it. I can't figure out how I allowed myself to do it. Okay, so say it again then. Or maybe it just bothers what me What so was much. the reason for why you did it? Because of the thought of it. The thought of what? Having, the thought of having sex with an underage girl. That was a virgin. And it made me horny. Right. And that pisses me off. Okay. Debbie even convinced Lauren to read his 400 page chat log with her and Emma, which is something he's never done before. He's never looked at that thing since he typed it years ago. It's never hit me until we, until we started reading through that. Okay. I don't know why it didn't hit me when I was reading through it. Well, I know why. I was just so nervous about it, not wanting to read it. It's going to be uncomfortable because it's disgusting. I'm telling you right now, I'm thinking ahead to it, and I know it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm really going to hate it, too. Okay. So we're going to do it. We're going to read the entire chat log. Okay. It's so fucking hard to do this. I love you, and it's so cute. Oh, well. Yeah. All right. All right, Lauren. Um, so say that last one again. I love your innocence. It's so cute. LOL. Huh? LOL. Did you get? Did I get you lost there? LOL. Um. Yeah. Kinda. LOL. Okay. Do you want me to explain it to you? Yeah. LOL. Okay, LOL. Innocence where you don't know anything about sexual stuff, LOL. Oh. I think it's adorable, LOL. What's so adorable? Okay, you think I'm dumb? No, not at all. You're a very smart girl. What's adorable is that you don't know much about that stuff yet, and that's very awesome. Because it means that you're using your head and we'll find out when it's time. Debbie has a lot of reasons for what she's doing and why she's doing it, but everything seems genuine, and this is the best help Lauren has ever gotten. Why do you keep trying to help me then if I'm all bullshit? I'm hoping that by helping you, I'm going to help the other people around you too, because they have to put up with your ass. <clears throat> Someone has to help you. Ever since you got out of prison, it's been just a complete mess. For Lauren, though, it seems like a completely different story. Lauren seems to appreciate the help that he's getting from Debbie, but it also seems like he's expecting something more to come out of these conversations. Literally at the end of almost every conversation they have together, Lauren either implies or outright says that he wants to be with Debbie and wants Debbie to give him a chance, even though he created such a huge mess out of things. Right, that's what I mean. Like, you're just gonna have to be better. You're going to have to live the life that you want to live and not just throw smoke screen at everyone and say, I'm going to make you believe that I'm good and I'm going to make you believe that I don't lie and that I'm living my life one way. But in reality, I'm still going to do everything that I've always done because I'm smarter than everyone else. And I'm going to take a chance because I don't really give a shit. Yeah, but I know I give a shit. I really do know that I care and just hate what I put myself through. 
Okay, got it. Person I turned out to be because of that shit. Right. Anyway. So is this a date that you're going on tonight? I am going to let you go. And I hope you have a wonderful night. Yeah, you too. Have fun on your date. You've been wanting them to not see you for who you are. To see you for the thoughts that you've had that have been expressed and that are known, that are out there. That are still continuing. It is so crazy for me, Lauren, to think that you would actually target the daughter of somebody that you said that you're in love with. It's so crazy to me. Why did you do that? So the thing with you and me was just a game. Really? Is that what you got? That's what I mean. Is this is is this what you're getting this, this from everything the, that I just this. said? No, this is the thought that's in my in my head the whole fucking time that you're talking to me is. is why would you play me like that? Lauren. I fucking love you. You didn't I stress hear. stressed my ass out over you when you were in the fucking hospital. You didn't hear of anything piece of that shit I Angelo said. All over your fucking ass. You didn't hear anything I said. Yeah, I did. Heard you didn't. everything you said. Then talk to me about what I said. Don't come at me like as if I have anything to do with anything I just said. I was not in that scenario. <sighs> you had asked me. What is my goal, essentially? And I explained it to you. The reasons why I am going through this with you. And your response is, so you're playing a game with me? The reason why you're sitting here and allowing me to go through this with you is because you think that I'm going to care more than doing just that. So that tells me that your motivation for doing this has nothing to do with getting better. Right now, I don't care what it tells you. What What are you talking about, dude? You went, you went way back. It's like, it seems like you had this whole thing planned out to play me like you liked me. Just so that you could get to this point to help me. No, I didn't. When you didn't really like me. No, I didn't really like you. I had already told you that. So you, you really fucking despise me is what you do. If I despise you, I wouldn't be sitting here. But Lauren, I want to be perfectly clear. Again, I do not love you. I'm not in love with you. I'm not attracted to you. I don't want anything with you. No, well, I'm I not attracted to you anymore either. Perfect. Good. I hope with that off the table, you're going to be able to go through this with me. It's fucking incredible. What's incredible? That you fucking played me the whole fucking time. Making me think that you fucking liked me. I don't like you. But I am helping you. And now you're trying to pick a fight with me. Tell me. How much of an asshole do you really think I am? Huge. I think you're a prick. So why did you like me? I didn't say that I liked you. I said I wanted to help you. Like she don't like me? No. You don't? I think you've done a lot of shitbag things. I think you've fucked a lot of people over. I think you've done disgusting shit. I mean, I've told all of this to you before. So all this time, you just pretend that you like me, just you tell me you're an asshole. Okay, so here we're going to go again, where you do your song and dance about pretending. I have told you that I want to help you. I have told you I want you to see who you are. I want you to admit it so that you can stop hurting people around you. That's what I want yeah. for you. Yeah, okay. You got that. But what I'm saying is from the beginning, you pretended like you liked me when you really didn't. You just wanted me to be able to see what an asshole I was. Why are we doing this again? I had already explained to you that it was really harmless flirting. Harmless. I've never had somebody jump off the fucking deep end like you. And when I realized that you did, I pulled it way back and I didn't allow it to go any further. And I have been so clear with you. I, 
it's unbelievable that we would actually be having this conversation again. I have wanted right. to help. But I also want you to know that you already know I fucking, I want you. Biggest part of the reason that I'll do every, everything in my life the way that I do it is probably because of you, because I want you. And I want to wow. um, I want to make you happy, and, and, and I want to care about you. And, you know, I want my life to be based around you. This, honestly, is the most disheartening thing to me. To ignore and go along with someone's advice just to get something at the end, but when you don't get it, you're gonna throw a fit and call the whole thing useless. The goal isn't to get better, it's to get with Debbie. And that really sucks. Now let's get back to crazy. Debbie decides to go on another boat trip with Angelo. Who is Angelo? Angelo is someone that Debbie met on one of her many cruises and someone that Debbie would consider a pretty good friend. After a while, his mood shifted and he became this really bad guy, but despite being a really bad guy, Debbie still keeps him around for some reason. And of course, Lauren doesn't like Angelo because Angelo is always hanging out with Debbie, which means that he's an obstacle. We already know the drill. I don't care if you're sexy, Angelo. Debbie thinks I am. How do you know? I used to catch her staring at me on the yacht. I have a question, Angelo. Fuck you want? What can you do with your micro pee? Hey man, fuck you man. I'm just asking. I made a lot of money. Well, other than the porn bullshit. You don't know how to eat ass. <laughs> um, alright, I don't know how you know that, but... Debbie was on a boat trip with Angelo in Florida, and on said boat trip, they caught a swordfish. The swordfish then jumped out of the net and stabbed Debbie in her throat, meaning that she had to be rushed to the hospital immediately. Uh, Winnie? Is it you? <laughs> Winnie, um, there's been an accident with the stingray. Um, our swordfish, fuck. Debbie's, um, we're going back to shore. There's an ambulance waiting there for her. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, get on the phone, you cock! <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Alright, calm, Winnie, calm down. Calm down. Calm down, calm guys. down. Let, in, she's let Angelo she's tell breathing. you what happened. We're going 68 miles an hour. I'm just going as fast as I can. She got, there's a swordfish. He's, he's in the net. He's in there. Um, he jumped out of the net when we cut it and it, it I thought it just brushed it but she turned to the side and it punctured her shoulder and her neck. While heading to the hospital, Angelo said a few things that made Lauren upset. Angelo, can you can you keep texting me and uh, keep letting me know what what's going on over there? <laughs> yes, yes I will. I am I'm sorry. I I was going to ask her to marry me tonight. Oh my god. Really? Oh my god. I uh, she doesn't even like you. She told me. <sighs> oh god, Debbie, please wake up, Debbie, you fucking beautiful cunt. <sighs> wake up. I was going to surprise her. I, I, all she does is insult me and I love it and I, I thought maybe she liked me because of it. Oh God! Winnie, you gotta, you gotta calm down, Winnie. Is she alive? Yeah, she's alive. She's alive. I'm... This doesn't mean anything right now, but Lauren would keep this energy for later. And trust me, 
it's pretty funny to see what he does with this energy. Debbie is now in the hospital, which means that Lauren and her can't talk like they did before. Fast forward to Mother's Day and Lauren finally blows up. Ask what's going on there. Was Winnie and Will there when you- I Don't know. Uh, when he was in the room, when he was in the fucking room, when she texted Angelo to bring her a fucking coffee, and she was on the phone with me, and she knows how much I hate Angelo. And you know what happened? Angelo got there. He said, uh, I, I told Debbie, I said, I love you, Debbie. Angelo said, I, I love you, pedo. Debbie never said a fucking thing. Never told me to shut up or nothing. Why is he poking his nose in your relationship with, with Debbie? Ask Debbie that. I'm going to put it on mute. Go ahead, call her and ask her. She's awake. I'm going to put it on mute, Dan. Go ahead, Ed. call her and ask her. Okay. <sighs> Hello. Hi, Debbie. It's Daniel. How are you? Just calling to see uh, how you're feeling. Did you have a good day? No, as a matter of fact, I, I'm not a mother, but I have a little baby brat bitch boy acting like a little bitch. Well, speaking of that, um, I talked to Juan earlier, and he mentioned that you guys were on the phone together and you asked An someone named Angelo, is that one of your friends? Yes. Now, I guess, Angelo, you needed a coffee at some point and you asked Angelo to get you a coffee when you could have asked Winnie, I guess? I wasn't trying to get into your business. Oh, she hung up. Lauren, she hung up. It should be here on me! Um, I'm sorry. What? I don't... This is all... I don't know. I just came here to spend the night. That's all. Yeah, well, did she hear anything I said? She knows what I'm fucking saying. It's him or me. That's it. There's no fucking discussion about it. She can make up her mind right now. It's him or me. If it's me, that motherfucker's getting, getting out of the fucking door right now. If it's him, I'm getting off the fucking phone right now, and I'll never talk to her again. She she's, can make up her mind right fucking now. She's turned away from me in the bed. I told her hands. four fucking times today. She ignored all my calls. But that fucking bitch was there with her. You tell her to make up her fucking mind. Put the phone up to her ear and I'll tell her softly. Make up her mind. It's going to be him or me. Apparently, Angelo was there to help Debbie get her a coffee and Lauren didn't like that. And because of how mad he is, he can't just go and enjoy Mother's Day, so now it's completely ruined, which is pretty funny. What did you and Mom do today? Yeah, I gave Mom a hug and a kiss. I came back to my house, built her a fucking food station for the yard sale. You know how much time I got to spend with my mother? How fucking, much? it was disgusting. About fucking 10 minutes. 10 fucking minutes. Because I was so upset because of Debbie and this fucking piece of fucking shit. So that motherfucker is gone or I'm gone. There's no discussion about it at all. 
Either that motherfucker's gone, or I'm gone. Now, why didn't you just stay at Mom's house if Debbie wasn't answering your calls? Because I had to come back here and work at Mom's food station. But when I dropped Roy off, I could have spent an hour there. But I was too fucking upset because of the bullshit of her not answering my call at 3.30. Because of this fucking piece of shit. This morning, bring her a fucking call. I, I am not fucking doing it. Lester, yeah, what information this motherfucker has gone through her fucking phone. This mother has crossed fucking boundaries that I don't accept. I don't Likewise, fucking accept. You. This motherfucker, I don't want this motherfucker in her life. If she wants him in her life, she can have him. But I'm not going to be there. Either he's gone or I'm gone. It's point fucking blank. Angelo became the wedge between me and Debbie. I don't think that's true. That's she the fucking issue. She Why don't want to get rid that? of Angelo. She doesn't want to get rid of Angelo. Then she wants to get rid of me. I am not going to have Angelo in my fucking life. Oh, and Angelo was up to more devious things than we first imagined. So that's also fun. Her stuff is obviously going to have to be moved out of the beach house. And before Angelo gets a chance to fucking take anything else, so have a cop go there with Will. Then Angelo can't say anything. He can't do anything. Nothing at all. Okay. Okay. I write it on my list. Okay. And there are storage buildings. So Debbie stuff can go in storage until she gets out of the hospital and get a different place. <sighs> the. the this is what I don't understand. Why didn't anybody think about this stuff before? I mean, is it Dan, any of this stuff? How, how fucking weird Angelo is. It, it took Dan to make me fucking realize, you know, the way Angelo is acting. But who's to say there's not a fucking hidden camera in there? Then I thought about the, how really how fucking weird he's acting. It's like, that only makes sense. Look, I'm going to be real. I'm kind of losing the plot. But it also seems like Lauren is also losing it. He seems to just be getting angrier and angrier as the months go by. And after the whole Debbie doesn't like Lauren thing, he just completely loses it. Lauren is going to have to calm down though because a more pressing issue is going to be at his doorstep very soon. Get up here. I said, okay, fine. Get up here and you and I will get married. Four oh, different fucking things. times, and just you're in California. You just broke up with me. Why would I think you were serious about a proposal? You're in fucking. I hear with me. One fucking year of my fucking life. But I tried. Oh, you you didn't fucking try. What you tried is fucking to please Xavier. I swear to Hitler, I love you. I That's still why you didn't fuck you like Emma. I... That's why you don't like Emma. Uh... Listen, Xavier hates Emma too. So well, well, yeah. No shit. You are doing this shit for fucking Xavier. I never made shit to you. Yeah, I love you. Xavier made more to you than I did. You never fucking loved me. Debbie never had any feelings for me. Yeah. No. No fucking if lie. If you're right. If you're Don't right, then fucking right, lie, I'm Winnie. I'm not. You're lying, Winnie. You're lying. If I, if you're I'm lying, and, and it's pathetic. You are fucking pathetic. We're finally nearing the end of our story, so let's do a bit of a wrap up. Lauren is still alone and dating no one. He claims that Debbie is in love with him and that she flirted with him a lot while she was in the hospital tending to her injuries, so he's a little bit confused as to why Debbie doesn't want to date him. So it's a flirting with me. You, you did more than fucking flirt with me and you know it. What did I do besides that? 
The whole fucking time you're in the hospital, it was all me. No, you, it wasn't important then. You were just interested in me a long time ago. No, I wasn't. No, you were. Of course you were. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Of course you were. Right. Yeah, of course you were. Yeah. Of course you were. Right. Yeah, you didn't come. You didn't come three times in the fucking hospital while making me stay on the phone and have phone sex with you. And right, I didn't. On, on the right, I didn't. Right, I didn't. Yeah. Right, I yeah, didn't. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're you full of shit fucking too. Fucking freak. No, you haven't. Who holds on to something when someone's in the hospital and they think something happened when they're heavily medicated, practically in a coma, and you take that and you're like, "Oh, she loves me, and I'm gonna sit here on the phone." Well, maybe she's you didn't want anybody else. Or whatever. I'm gonna sit there and jerk off to it like a fucking disgusting freak. Other than that, he's doing okay for himself, I guess. Emma and Dan, for the most part, are fine. Nothing good or bad happens to them. Winnie finishes high school and then goes off to college. You know, to try to make something of herself. Winnie I never fucking did that shit to me. I actually talked to Winnie yesterday. I she's, still love her, damn. She's, she sounds really fucking good. She's cleaned up. She told me she's uh, going. To, she's going to be going to college. Yeah. If I graduate from high school, then I get my trust funds donated. I doubled, I mean, like, two times. Good. I know. Good. When, when are you supposed to... You already decided to take more classes, right? Yeah. So when are you supposed to graduate? Well, it depends on what I'm looking for. So if I get my nursing degree, it'll take two years. I think it's pretty funny how she starts getting better after Lauren and her stop dating. Will is supportive of Winnie, and they're doing a pretty good job taking care of LJ. Gigi died of an overdose a while ago, if anyone cares. Jamie Amy is still doing her porn cam stuff. And Debbie was still talking to Lauren, but they were talking less and less as time went on. When it comes to the whole Lauren likes Debbie thing, she isn't down for that at all. She may have flirted with him while she was in the hospital and on a ton of medication, but after seeing how far Lauren took it, she decided to cut it off completely. I'm getting to know the real you, Lauren. What the hell? I have spent my time explaining things to you, working things out with you, and it all goes right into the toilet. You don't hear anything that I have to say because it comes right back down to this. You knew that I wanted to be friends with you. You knew that we did not have a relationship. I had apologized to you up and down about flirting with you at the beginning. I shouldn't have done it because you took it way over the line. I did not know that was gonna happen. If I could go back, it never would have happened because I want to be friends with you. I don't wanna mess with your head. I don't wanna troll you in some way. I just wanna be a good person who's trying to help you. That's it. Every single time, it's like we go through this cycle. Everything is fine, you understand. And then all of a sudden, something sets you off and you start screaming again. You start rehashing everything from all the way back at the beginning. Despite cutting it off and making her boundaries clear, Lauren is still going to push it and get mad when Debbie goes out with other guys. Yeah, you were out on a fucking date with a cop. And I was, oh yeah, exactly. I was out on a date with a cop. What? It's really rude that you hang up on me like that. You shouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's really rude that you call me at 10.30 at night when you're still on your fucking date. I didn't call you. I texted you. That you fucking you ditched me for. that I was not going to be home on time. And I didn't want you yeah. waiting up. Yeah, because you were still on your fucking date. Lauren. Fucked up date. You can't even call me and have fucking time with me on the fucking phone. But you can go on every, a fucking date every goddamn night of the fucking week. It was a normal day. Lauren had talked to Debbie earlier, telling her about his day coming up. He had a probation meeting coming up, as he still attends his weekly classes. You kind of forget about all of the class stuff because of everything that's been going on, but yeah, he still does that. He goes in, thinking that it's just another checkup, but he ends up getting arrested. So why is Lauren going to jail? Well, for a lot of reasons, but the biggest one is probably because he hasn't passed his sex offender class and it's been like 8 years. He keeps drinking, talking to people online, 
sending sexual photos to people online, etc, etc. And as Debbie pointed out before, every time Lauren walks into his class and they have him sign a piece of paper, that's him agreeing to whatever is on that paper, because that paper is modifying his terms of probation. Well, it's concerning just based on all of the stuff, the paper trail that's there. And it's been there for a couple of years. A lot of times when you say that you're going in to talk to Maria and just sign a paper, you're signing a modification to your probation that's getting filed. And then when something else goes wrong, then you're violating that. The problem is, is if I don't sign it, then she threatens to send me to jail. But you can have a hearing and you can get an attorney. That's one of your rights. That says it on the paper. Yeah, but I, I haven't had the money to do that. Why would you have to pay for an attorney to do that? You can get a hearing legally. Because Matt is the very first free attorney, the appointed, the court appointed attorney that I've had that has actually so far shown me that he's doing something. Well, the, what I'm saying is that if you said that you wanted to have a hearing, that you weren't going to sign it, and that you were going to have a hearing, it would go to the court, and then you would get a lawyer. Yeah, she would send the marshals after me until. Okay, I mean, but if there, Just if you don't agree to something, if you didn't agree to something, and you didn't want to sign it then let her do that and that's what if that's what it's going to take for you to go through it but don't just sign something and then it gets filed and and you're held to it that's the acts that's against your head are all the signatures when you waived your rights so lauren can only blame himself lauren calls upon his trusting friend emma you know to maybe raise a little ruckus online for his cause emma even tries to get lauren an interview with chris hansen yes the chris hansen I called Chris Hansen. I told him that um, you would like to just sit down across from him and tell him some things, that it won't be an interview. And um, he said he was going to call and get on the visitor list and go fly up. And also, Dan told me to ask your attorney if you're officially in the class right now, because if you're not, you can give any fucking interview you want. But that actually doesn't happen. Well, know. okay, Chris Hansen's really upset. Why? He called the jail, and they told him that you outright refused to speak with him, and you had no interest in and talking with him at any time while you were there. Huh? You had no interest at ta- in talking to him at any time while you were still there. Chris Hansen. Um, I'll talk to him uh, while I'm here. I'd rather not. I'd rather wait to see where Lauren, the, uh, he's where trying to. If I'm gonna get out. Debbie goes on a cruise to the Arctic, living her best life and not caring about Lauren. Hi, Hello. beautiful. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I've had better days. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, How's your cruise going? It's really, really nice. It's so beautiful here. Good. You're in Alaska? Yeah. Yeah. Stop by Elmendorf. I can see the glaciers right now. You're in the where? What? I can see the glaciers right now where I'm at. Oh, really? really nice. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That is so cool. Right. They do talk sometimes while Lauren is going through this process, and Debbie sets him out straight a little bit. Lauren thinks that he is going to prison because he failed a lie detector test, even though that's furthest from the truth. I know exactly the bullshit that you were up to, all the violations that you have. <laughs> what have you read? Um, everything that's on the docket. Everything well, that's that been think. filed. Excuse me? Well, everything that's been filed, I didn't, well, I'm not worried about everything that's been filed. I haven't, I haven't uh, violated probation. This, this yes, is the you have. This is the violation I've got. I'm, okay, I'm not going to go into detail over this. Or whether okay, re- fine. Don't go into detail, I. but I already know, Lauren. 
Lauren also thinks that there's still a sliver of a chance that he can date Debbie, and it's very painful to listen to. I hear it. I hear you getting married. You hear I'm getting married? What? Yeah. There's some Colombian guy named Duke that you're learning how to speak Spanish for. I am learning to speak Spanish. It's really fun. I'm really, really bad at it, though. So don't yeah. ask. I heard you, heard you learning it for him. Okay. What else did you hear? I heard he asked you a question and you, you haven't answered him yet. He asked me a question. Okay. That he proposed what question to you. is that? Okay. I heard, that he I heard that he proposed to you. Okay. So what? So, so what's your answer? I don't have an answer. How long have you known him? A while. A while. You haven't known him very long. You haven't only known him since you've been down there. Down You're before. not going to try to give me a relationship therapy, are you? Seriously? Whatever. Whatever. Because you Whatever you, you said that to. you wanted to marry you said you wanted to marry Winnie and you you were never in the same room with her. So. Whatever. <laughs> hey, Whatever. Not my, fault. <laughs> not my fault. You never want to meet me. That's, that's up to you, not me. I know it's up to me. So what's going on in there? So I'm only trying okay, to but they, the the judge it. already decided that that you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to serve time. Well, we already decided that when I went to court the last time, so I could just you know, skip the preliminary. Because uh, I, I had already, I had already failed the test, and I had already admitted to drinking. So right. it's just a matter of Maria and Bryce trying to hold a, an axe up to my head. But now they're all freaking out because they're worried about me giving an interview to Chris Hansen, and they, they should be worried about it. They don't want it in the media, and if they they piss me off, it'll it'll be in the media. And they, they don't I thought you already said that, that you weren't going to talk to him. I'm not. Well, no, well, you haven't, you haven't been had contact with me for a bit because you've been preoccupied learning Spanish. So yeah, uh, with my own life, things. exactly. Yeah, with your, with your boyfriend. With my own life. Yeah, with your boyfriend. And I'm asking you about what's going on with you so that if I can help in any way or whatever, then I will. But you're not going to give me any fucking shit about living my own goddamn no. life. That's what you you're not going to You have one minute do. left. With your boyfriend. Okay, bye. We only have one minute left. <laughs> Lauren's detention hearing was on August 22nd and September 3rd was his sentencing hearing. He's already going to jail. It's now just deciding if it's going to be a year or if it's going to be six months. It ended up being six months and that's the end of our story.